And by the way, talking about sex is a great way to keep passion alive because talking about sex is really sexy. One of the things that, and I'll just give you some background that I get a lot with men is one of the things that really frustrates them is that they feel like women are a moving target. They don't know where to go because we are giving them all sorts of inputs and they, they, they are very direct beings. They want information that is just very like, just tell me what to do. Tell me where to go and I'll go there. So when you're thinking through your answers, be, and, and women, I, this is how us women talk, right? We kind of, we, 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 yeah. pull, we kind of go in, we kind of go out, we kind of, oh, well, it's all over the place. And, you know, so it's my job to kind of go, okay, ladies, we need to give them precise direction okay. on what is it. So, so the first question, what I mean is what makes you want to have sex with a man? Is it his smell? Is it the way he looks? Is it, you know, his body? Is it, what is it that draws you to a man that, that makes you go, Oh yeah. Him. (laughs) So yeah, let's start there. Okay. Go for it. Um, sense of humor. Yeah. (laughs) Sense of humor is an absolute offense. A good sense of humor. hundred percent. I like like to say sometimes it just, the the physical connection there there is something you you feel it you touch I do a lot of dance and sometimes you touch your your, your dance partner and you say mm, there is a sparkle there is something more than just uh, I take your hand for to, to dance and and after if there is genuine interest and respect in the relationship and as Deb says the um, a balance in the confidence in each partner. It's like okay, there is something here, and I want to to look uh, to to go for it. Yeah, I believe that it's mostly about connection, and if you can communicate with the other person, if if you can exchange thoughts, and even if it's for something not so serious as for a relationship, in order for me to you know, want to move on with a guy, it would be um, his. <laughs> Uh, way of thinking, way of approaching me, how smart he is, the humor, as you said. I just want to point out that we're all talking about, myself included, that it's all about the emotional connection, the, the connection of feeling seen and heard and loved and all of those gushy feelings that we get. That makes us want to, that makes us feel safe. Okay. So as far as, you know, teasing goes and, and foreplay, um, t- let's, I want to talk about foreplay and like, what does that look like specifically for you that creates like a really nice build up to a sexual encounter? Okay. So foreplay, I think starts with words a lot of the time, you know, so it can be like a good morning text message or something like that. And then building it up through the day. Oh my God, there's, there's nothing like it, you know, because then when you actually finally get down to the act, it's going to be explosive because you've both been really like building it throughout. Um, and it is, it's just, it's down to the words you use and, um, and, and that would be dependent on your partner, of course, but yeah, just something, something where you start it off and then you build it up. That's going to be explosive. When is it too soon? Like in, if you are getting to know someone and if let's say if you're in a dating situation, you know, when is it too soon to kind of go in for it? Like what's the build up for men that they should know? You know, you meet a woman and then the first, you know, is it the first first week, first month, first couple months? Like that's that what is- I want to say that it's very important when so to make the distinction between when you are in a relationship and when you're dating. Because when you're in a relationship, you can say anything to these texts. Whereas at the initial stages, if you say something weird, the person will, will go away immediately. So I would say after two weeks, maybe uh, start saying things, see what the other person likes, not go directly into the deep, you know. Yeah, I I actually agree with that as well. Like I've spoken to men and they've said like, oh, you've got such kissable lips, like straight away. And that was a turnoff for me 
Mm-hmm. Because I thought, no, uh-uh, let's get to know each other. Because right. it's either you're looking to f- me or you're looking for a relationship, and I'm looking for a relationship. So therefore, let's first off get that, you know, straight. <laughs> I think uh, se- over-sexualization is, yeah. is, can be a turnoff. Oh, no, I, was- say, it, I, say, I think it's the difference between being told that you're beautiful or being told that you're hot. You know, yes. Somehow that, that, those two words mean co- two completely different things. One it could be more of your inner beauty, who you are. The other one is, it's just, you're just a sex object. It's just, you know, exactly. They just want to throw you down on the next most available surface and just do you. And that's not appealing. There's a time and a place, but that has to be more so yeah. from a relationship, from a man that you trust fully. How long do you typically wait to have sex when entering into a new dating situation? Like how long does it typically kind of take for you to have sex with a guy? Um, I think it's better to wait uh, because then you build more of a rapport with each other, more trust. Uh, You know where each of you are going or what you're looking for. Women, we live in our hearts. So it's all feelings for us. Men are not the same way. They're not the same way. We may think that they are, but they're not. So it's best to find out before you go there. Um, I think that it depends on the age other than, you know, the person. Because younger people, especially in university setting, tend to, to go really fast. Apart, Let's not mention the dating apps and the damage that they've done to human relationships. But I think that people have started to move really fast. And they have stopped having relationships with each other. So it's mainly dating, sex, and it finishes there. So it's a bit sad, I would say, as a situation, especially for people that are in their 20s. Anyone else have any advice on men? If, you, if you're never going to sleep with them, how would they know? Um, you can tell them straight up. I just see you as a friend. I see nothing else from where going. I would say just communication is key. That's yeah. what I learned, especially working with only just men. I'm the only girl at my department. Communicating is when they'll listen. Sometimes you have to tell them more than once. And once you do tell them more than once, then they listen. Mm-hmm. I think, so, and like you said, like you said, Sarah, it's like they listen to words you have to tell them verbally, not just give hints because they don't pick up on hints. No, no, you have to be very direct. Is it offensive if they if you don't have sex within three dates and then they're out? Um, what, is that? I, what is that? What message does that send to you? It makes me feel like a piece of ass. <laughs> really well. I would be positively surprised if there's you know if they don't want to have sex in three dates. It's interesting because is that that's your that's what you you've experienced then is they've not been so subtle you've really known that they wanted to have sex with you right from the get-go yes and it's actually it shows respect you know to the other person that I will wait until you're ready and this can be in one week two weeks one month it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be three dates Serena we were talking about um what keeps the passion alive in a long-term relationship and what makes it die um (sighs) Yeah, so I think that it factors in a lot whether you um, have children or not, and also whether you're, you know, in the same line of work and whatnot, because children always add kind of a new challenge. And for me and my husband both, it seemed like it um, made it so that we didn't prioritize sex as much, I think. And then um, also uh at least for the first maybe five years or more of my marriage I didn't understand what I needed to enjoy sex properly like the foreplay um like like the fact that it does take me longer as a woman to get aroused like I need to have the space to feel contained and get out of my head my body and so I didn't have a lot of satisfaction early in sex, especially since children. And I was just always thinking all the things I need to do, all the things I should do for the children um, and their needs came above mine. And so then my husband would just occasionally be like, so I guess horny that like he would give me attention in the middle of the night, which ironically worked for me because um, I was 
able to have slept a little bit and like be out of my head and like receptive to attention. Uh, but that still wasn't a great long term um, solution. So what what worked for me was as a woman deciding sex needs to get better. And so I need to figure out what arouses me and what turns me on and what I need. And I learned so much about myself and, and realized that I didn't need to judge myself for being different. And I started expressing a little bit more what I needed. And one of the things that I realized shut me down really often was I was taught, I don't know, from religious upbringing or what, but like that you need to give sex to your man. Like you need to give him whenever he wants it, you need to give him sex, basically. And that made me close up. Like my body said, no, like it was trying to protect me um, from forcing what I didn't want. And but that made me unable to say like a yes, you know, because I thought I couldn't say no. And then when I finally had that conversation with my husband, he said, no, like, I never want you to not um, tell me what you actually feel. And I don't want you to just like have sex with me because I'm asking you, I want you to be able to say no, I want you to want it, you know, Mm. and um, that transformation actually made a huge difference for me uh, in realizing I just need to feel into my body and feel what I want. And when I know that I can say no, that means that... uh, (laughs) uh, it's not a threat. Like my, my husband's not a threat. And that was a really, really huge thing because I realized that whenever he gave me any attention, I was like my, um, fight, flight, or freeze response kicked in. So it was like danger. I might have my boundaries like pushed. I might have mm-hmm. to collapse myself. And when I realized that I could have my boundaries and that was what my husband wanted and that's what I wanted, uh, it changed you know, everything. And then we, we talk a lot more about sex. And by the way, talking about sex is a great way to keep passion alive because talking about sex is really sexy. Have you ever wondered why women can't be more direct or just tell you what it is that they want? Why does it always have to feel like a test? Women are just too complicated and too emotional. In my course, Her, I'm going to teach you how to better understand the woman in your life. Whether you're single or married, you'll come away with a greater understanding of why women do the things they do, how her instincts play a role in her behavior, and how you can help her relax into her femininity. You'll also hear from 10 amazing women on panel discussions that provide tips on sex, how to approach a woman, and what we are truly looking for from the men in our lives. Gaining this knowledge will help you to cultivate an atmosphere in your relationship of peace and understanding, which is ultimately what I feel that we are both looking for. You won't regret purchasing this course, as you will also have access to my private Telegram community where you can ask questions and connect with other men and women who want the same thing that you do.